So welcome to yet another episode of Jesus Christ, Not Another Fucking Podcast. Oh, here comes Tess. Oh, so the thing that's really fun for me is the way that I've arranged my schedule, whether I was aware of it or not, I'm doing a mastermind with Mary Magdalene in the mornings at 11 a.m. And hey, Tess. And then this podcast with Yeshua in the afternoons or the early evenings. Believe me, darkness is coming and there'll be a point where it's dark at five and it'll be the evening, but the sun is still up. So here we are. And, um, and I've been having these sessions. <laughs> I have this gorgeous assistant whose name is Kat. And Kat keeps up coming up with all these fabulous ideas for marketing. So people, usually I'll do about two or three sessions in a day. And right now I've been doing about seven. Because so many people bought so many things. And I'm, to say I'm tired, doesn't even begin to describe it. But man, it's worth it. And last night I taught a class, and it's usually a two-hour class, but it was a three-hour class because it's the big, the big, big one that you teach it at the end of it. And let's see, Linda and Tess were in that class. It was really amazing. Wasn't that an amazing exercise last night? Yeah, Tess is like heart. It's the one where they learn how to go into past lives. What they don't yet know is that it's also going to be the one that's going to take them into future lifetimes and simultaneous existences. And both Carol and Nadia have signed up to join us for the year-long program. So has Linda and so has Tess. And I'm going to be taking you through 18 classes over this next year. Um, you're going to be learning over 34, 35 tools and techniques, including how to go into the future, how to go to simultaneous existences, how to really go into the past. And I, I channeled for the first time this extraordinary being today. Her name is Mother Maya. Um, Mother Maya is one of the original architects. She said to me, I birthed Sophia. And she, she birthed, she said she birthed God. So there you go. Okay, listen. Oh, here he is. Okay, good. I was going to say. Yeah, check on my brother. Hi, lovey. Okay, good. I was just about to check on you. I want to make sure you're okay. Yes, I'm here. It was just wasn't connecting for some reason. <clears throat> I did a pre-show test about a half hour ago, and then all of a sudden I was blocked out. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Happens. happens to the best of us. Nadia, hey, I was just... Carol, I was... Michelle, Tess, Linda, and Water. Hello. Hey, Miss Lynn. Reverend Lynn. All right, we got everybody. So... Nadia was telling me this hilarious conversation about she had connected with Wendy and she started doing a deep dive into Wendy and then she came across me and she at first wanted to have nothing to do with me because I was a reverend and I'm like oh you don't understand the kind of reverend that I am and I was explaining the of purposes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> now that's on film that's okay um, as long as you don't exploit it well we've got We've got um, Reverend Dan coming in at the end of August. And here's the crazy thing. Sometimes, you know, we used to have a lot of people, like in the beginning, a lot of people. He's been doing these ordinations for 35 years. He's ordained 17,000 people. But usually my ordinations are, I don't know, five, six people or so. And right now we've got 18. Wow. If you want to come, I know it's going to be crazy. If you want to come, Rob, and drop in and say hi. Yeah, I would love to. Saturday the Saturday the twenty fourth, yeah. He is. I like that. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful experience if you're if you're close to New York and you can get to it. It's definitely a worthwhile experience. It's a one day or two days. It's it's one day. It's five hours. Like, what was it? One day. One day. One day, it was, it was a, one day. Five hours. Yeah. 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 It, it was a really a, wonderful experience. Um, I at when I first was ordained. I was like, all right, I'll just keep this to myself. You know, people are going to think I'm crazy. I'm going around telling people I'm a reverend. And um, I didn't kind of feel anything, you know, like, oh, you know, like waiting to feel that, you know, that, ah, oh. well, that didn't happen. But a few months later, I 
started to relate to Melchizedek and then started to channel Melchizedek. And it, it's been an amazing experience. So the bottom line is for me, it didn't feel like it started the first day, but then once it opened up, it was like, well, I'm all about it. I'm, it's totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. For, for me, what happened was, um, for me, what happened was there were, I think there were seven of us being ordained that day. And somehow my name ended up being last one. And he does these, especially with 18 of you, he does these invocations where he does a special one for the first person. Then he does the kind of shortened version for the people in between. And then he does a special one for the last one. And I was, you know, I didn't know any of that. So he, he, I'm the last one. And you, and I, for some reason I felt to wear all white and I mostly wear all white anyway. But he hands you the stick and he goes, this is all the power that you ever have. And it's a stick with that's wrapped with gold on the top. And basically all the power belongs to God. So you sit in this chair and he uses holy metals, holy oils and holy water. And he like ordains you. And he says this prayer and he makes these intonations. But there's a Kundalini download that occurs. So I'm with my business partner at the time. His name is James Bazakos. And we've now got to drive from like six hours up north near, I think it's Otsego, something like that. It's like Binghamton, right? Like six, just like almost near the North Pole. Like it's so far away. It's like six hours away. And we got to drive. It's, it's, it feels like the North And it was winter. Like we're there. It was, it was December 17th was the ordination. And we had come in the night before to these eight foot snow drifts and we're looking at each other and I'm like, what are we doing here? And he goes, I don't know. You said we were supposed to do this. And I'm like, I felt so compelled. Like the Jesus power of Jesus, blood of Jesus compels you. Like I had, we had to go. When I first heard about this, our friend, Charlie Tedesco, I walked into a room where Charlie was leading an event and he's wearing a golden Egyptian crown. And I'm like, wait, what? It's so weird. And Charlie and I have this connection. He tells a story about the order of Melchizedek. Have I told the story here? The order of Melchizedek. So Charlie goes to his best friend's bedside and father's his best friend's father's bedside. Father's dying. Charlie says, you know, like final prayers. And he says, may his soul receive the highest elevation possible given his good works this lifetime. And I hear this prayer when Charlie tells the story and I'm like, oh my God, and the prayer just goes into my heart. And since that day, that was 2017, I have said that prayer every time I've heard of someone passing because it's just such a magnificent prayer. So Charlie's best friend's father died. And several months later, the sister of the best friend goes to a medium and the medium says, your father says to thank your brother for the priest that he had on his bedside at the hospital. She goes, priest? Hey, Deborah, welcome, love. And, uh, and so she calls her brother and she's like, what priest did you have at daddy's bedside? And he goes, I don't have a priest. I had Charlie. And so he calls Charlie and he goes, why is your father saying that? Why is my father saying that you're a priest? And he said, oh, cause I'm ordained in the order of Melchizedek. And as soon as Charlie said this, we're in a room of like 80 people with the eyes of learning. I almost fall off my chair and I get this like shocked put of information that says, the order of Melchizedek has the order that Jesus was ordained into because he was of the bloodline of David and not the bloodline of Aaron. And I'm like, what? So I go up to Charlie at the, at the break and I'm like, oh my God, like I have to find out about this. And he goes, well, there's a guy who comes to town to do it, but the lady hasn't been able to get enough people. And I'm like, how many people does he need? And he goes, he needs five people. And I'm like, I can do that. So over the years, over a hundred people have been ordained through here. I reach out to Reverend Dan. He's like, well, I got my next ordination happening in December. And I'm like, we're coming. I'm bringing my business partner. And he's like, okay, bring cash. <laughs> so we drive up there. And as James and I are driving on our way back to New York, I'm burning up and I'm tearing my clothes off. And I say to him, and I'm like down to like brawn underwear. And I'm like, you, like, you need to pull over and let me roll in the snow. And I imagine like one of those cartoons where the, hot person goes in the stone. There's nothing but steam. And I'm like, please, please get me a cold drink. And he's like, it's 13 degrees out. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm, I'm dying. And I'm sitting in the car while he's in like a, a gas, a 7-Eleven or something like that. And there's this guy by the front door 
and I look over at him and he's just this beautiful, beautiful black man, but you can tell that he's like broken. And he looks at me and we smile at each other and he walks toward the car. And normally I just would have been afraid because sitting here in my underwear and dark at night and you know, who knows what the hell. And he, he walks over and he said, you have the most beautiful smile. I said, thank you. And he said, would you buy me some beer? And I said, no, but I'll give you money to buy beer. <laughs> Reach into my purse and I pull out $20 and I give it to him. And he's like, thank you. And I, and I just looked at him and I said, God bless you. And he's like, who are you? And I said, I'm, I'm a priest in the order of Melchizedek. And he's like, thank you very much. And he walked away. It changed both of our lives. Like I just sent this man love. There was nothing to do but love this being. And James comes back and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm changed. And he's like, here's your cold drink. And like, it was just, it was one of these moments. And I've had people that had ordinations here at the house and they've had to go in the other room and lie down and sleep. That happened to David. When David came, our David Young. Yeah. And it's funny. I remember Reverend Dan looking at David and going, I, I know things, but I don't say them. And David's this very, very holy man. Um, hey, Vilma, welcome. Uh, anyway, so Reverend Dan is coming to do these ordinations. So Melchizedek in the Bible is known as the being who came to Avram and Sarai and said, you, are, you will be Abraham and you will be the leader of three nations. Hello? And you, are, you will be Sarah and you will give birth to a child. They were both in their 90s. That wasn't likely. But they also say that Melchizedek is the incarnation that Yeshua had before he came through as Jesus. Yeshua, <laughs> whatever you want to call him. So Melchizedek in the Bible, like there's a whole thing about him and, and it goes back to Enoch and, you know, all those beginning guys. But they say there's a line that says, and Reverend Dan kept hearing this passage from John. It says, you are now and forever shall be a priest in the order of Melchizedek. So he uses that as part of the ordination. Anyway, so we're having that service. Linda is coming in with several others. She'll be coming into town. In fact, Deborah's coming too. Linda and Deborah, two of these lovely women here. And as much as Nadia wants to come, it happens to be her husband's birthday. So she can't come to this one, but she'll come to another one. Listen, I I love you to bits and I want to see you, but you're you're coming? Wait. He said yes. All right. Oh my God. Oh, all right. Well, here we go. So now we're at 19. Okay. I'm just saying. So how come you never told me that you were the goddess of cerveza? The goddess of the goddess of beer? Rolling around on the side of the road and you're on the way handing out cash for beer? I Dude. mean, come on, Lynn. I think Dude. you missed it. Something, <laughs> something. I, I, I'm telling you, I just, I love this man. All like, just, this, <laughs> this, this man, I don't know. I just, I love this soul. Like I, like I've loved him my whole life. It was, it was such a, such a phenomenal experience. Like he, he just said, you have the most beautiful smile. And all I was doing was just beaming him love. And afterwards I was like, what was it? Like I was, you know, I, I think I pulled something over me. So it didn't look like I was completely half naked but it was it was a sure crazy you experience go the changes all those no. Years ago? no 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 that I mean, ship based on the age and you know, all that you know that ship had sense. said trust me i'm 62 this was seven years ago uh-uh yeah. dude i went through that when i had my hysterectomy at 50 everything left the left the system there you go no this was this was this was uh, is Jesus coming today? I don't know what that means. You mean, am I going to channel him? Um, I think I, I think I channel him every time we're here. Pretty much. You never Pretty know much. who's going to show up. You know, it is eight eight. The, the e well, it's eight eight. Uh, right in the early in the beginning of the earth. Listen, right? I got to so, tell you, my Asia. my beloved business partner Wendy, goddess that she is, um, started recently channeling mother maya and mother maya here and oh, hold on i gotta turn off this alarm um i had the opportunity to channel mother maya today and she is one of the ancient architects and she said she gave birth to sophia she gave birth to god 
Like, I don't question this stuff. It's the biggest energy I've ever channeled. And she started singing. She started doing light language, kind of like what happened with, with Magdalene today. Magdalene went into singing and doing light language and chakra clearing and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, magical, magical stuff's happening. Magical shit for sure. Um, so wait, you're actually coming? Your husband's? Do you want to bring your husband? <laughs> to, or he's got to stay home with you? Listen, you know, I, I'm, I say yes to everybody. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna fit everybody, even if I have to put a sofa out on the patio. No, I got folding chairs. We'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Put up a tent. We'll make it work. Wow, wow. Well, here's the thing: when Melchizedek calls you, it's it's like it just doesn't make any sense. You have to go. Oh, by the way, Tess and Nadia, you both live in Virginia. I don't know if you guys are near each other, but you're both Virginia folk. Um. Well, yeah. So Reverend Dan is coming to town. Reverend Dan is coming to town. Tess, what town do you live in? I don't know. So, yeah. Huh. And she was coming. Anyway, you guys can type to each other. Um, so we oh, two weeks ago, we opened up a retreat to Sedona, and that thing is completely full. Now we've got the ordination completely full. We're going to be doing a trip to the south of France for Magdalene next year with a Paris extension, of course. We're going to be going to Hawaii. We're going to be going to Mount Shasta. And we're going to be going to Tulum. My girlfriends and I have opened up the halls of the goddess retreats. And we've got some beautiful branding that goes with it. Um, we got a whole bunch of people that are coming into the year-long mastermind. Just magical stuff is happening. And Yeshua and Magdalene and now Mother Maya and so many others are on post. So, yeah. Yeah, Yeshua is always going to come through. How do we do an evening without him? How do we do a day without him? How do we do a life without him? Ever, ever, ever. Right, Robert, Chris who, who have you got Chris. for us today, baby? Oh, today we have Master Kathumi. Oh, we love Master Kathumi. Master Kathumi. He's, you know, part of the posse with Sananda, a.k.a. Jesus. And uh, this just came in the other morning. And it starts yeah. with Dear Spirit, please tell me what it is I need to know. Greetings, brother. It is I, Kathumi, with you once more. Thank you for the request of presence this day. Beloved, please continue to re remain calm and at ease as so much continues to shift and change. Great are the energies at this time upon your world, and great are the beings here to assist in the transition phase of ascension. So be not bothered by what you see, and trust that we, your galactic family, have it all under control. Of course, there will be those who choose to stay in 3D, but for those, the majority, this has been what they came for. Year after year and lifetime after lifetime, they and you have waited for this moment to arrive and arise. Each of you is a sovereign being of light simply having the human experience with all its ups and downs, never remembering your true divine source light energy and the power to create at will all that is ever needed to thrive on planet Earth. So in conjunction with Gaia, humanity has been, been given the greatest opportunity ever afforded a population, and that is to live within a three-dimensional body thus providing every opportunity to experience creation without restriction. Diving into the depths of despair and rising to the pinnacle of success and back again, all in an effort to realize oneself, yet never truly grasping the power contained within. You see this in your history as kings and queens arise to a throne yet never awakening to their true identity or angelic source. So as this matrix of belief 
along with the endless opportunities to get lost within, dissolves before us, let all of humanity expand more into their, once more into their godlike being, and accept that we are complete at this time. And it is time for us to move on, to move into the next phase of experience. Each and every soul has the opportunity to expand, to rise up and out of the chains that bind you to the tale of your beginning and the nonsense and lack of purpose given for being here on this sphere at this exact time. So again, I and we ask that you encourage all that you can to look within, look to us for the answers you seek and trust that as we reveal ourselves, so much more is going to make sense for you and all in this time of great celebration and reunion. So please continue to look to the sky and know that we are looking back with great excitement at a job well done and at a collective that has held it all together through the common belief in love. So let this be a final word on ascension. Congratulations to all of you, for you have made it to the promised land. And now it is time to relax and enjoy the show. I thank you once more for your diligence and commitment to transcribing what is put forth, dear one. Farewell. How beautiful is that, babe? This is Kathumi letting us know that and there's many of these messages that we're getting closer and closer and closer. How close? I, I hope it's like tonight when I wake up. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow. But I don't, <laughs> I, it, it's it's a work in progress. They keep telling us as more and more people's vibration reaches a level of synchronicity with ours, the collective continues to expand and grow. And more and more of us will move out of the 3D matrix and into the 5D. Um Say, and, and some people say, oh, you've been saying that for years. I, I've met people like I've channel messages and, and I'll share them and someone will say, oh, I saw that, that same thing 30 years ago. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I just got it last week. And to me, I believe it, you know. But again, when you look at time, time is a human construct. It's only here for us to have this cycle and move to the next. From the yeah. angelic or multidimensional aspects, there is no time. So it's all happening concurrently. So it's tough for us to grasp in the 3D. But I'm yes, ready. Would. I don't know about yes, you, but I'm would. ready. Come on, let this be it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeshua came Does forth. Does anybody have with... any comments or questions about that particular message? I love Ten. it. And uh, uh, it made me cry. Tears was coming. So, and it happened. I bought a book today, like a folder. This book like a notebook and it uh -huh. says on the beginning saint francis of assisi mm -hmm. That's well, guess who saint uh, francis of assisi was is kutumi uh, uh the huge aspect is saint germain i think that was kutumi uh no saint germain saint really? germain kutumi i guess they overlap it's all consciousness so i, I i'm not i don't want to argue. and i was asking kutumi to come to the channeling <laughs> <laughs> okay so you got it wow that's awesome you got it saint can't can't make this shit up francis of assisi so really the emperor with no clothes it was really him talking to the pope <laughs> naked the pope didn't know what to do Yeshua came through. I don't know whether it was yesterday or the day before. No, it had to have been yesterday. I channeled him. And he was talking about time and space. Oh, he's coming in. Whew. He was talking about time and space. And then later that afternoon, he, he reached out and he said, please listen to the recording and please send it to Wendy. And what he was saying was that We've been given this time-space continuum so that we have the opportunity to master time. He said one of the things that he had done was he mastered time. And I said to him, how did you do that? And he said, instead of living in, in shame and guilt, about what had happened in the past. And instead of having trepidation, fear, and anxiety of what's going to happen in the future, 
he went in and he forgave everyone and everything that he had ever experienced forgave himself for the things that he had done forgiven others for all the places where he was held in grievances and judgments and then it allowed him to become completely present he no longer had fear of of anything for the future he just knew like he was so in matched with god every moment he was like you know god help me god save me you know asking god ask what did he say he said he was asking god um how did he put it god to heal his mind god to heal his body god to heal his heart god to bring him closer god to bless his family god to bless him god to bless the earth like he was just constantly in prayer for god and he got so present that it unhooked him from the time space continuum and he said the space is when you accumulate things whether it's people whether it's objects whether it's a lady with 28 cats you know whether it's you have a tchotchke collection or 98 shoes because you're crazy or you know like whatever the thing is but you feel like you need to have these objects and you've imbued them with your love and your energy and he's like i think he said in the japanese culture like they have nothing but space you know it's very very zen and he said, and by letting go of everything he was attached to physically, it let him master space. So he mastered space and time. And that's what allowed him to be the Christed being. And I thought that was magnificent. There's this beautiful book, How to Become a Christ, by a man named Lynn, Lynn, in that statement. Uh, he, 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 which one? With regard to mastering space. And not huh? having things, right? That was he had attached to things for him to to ascend or move on to another frequency, right? Yeah. Why else would you want to, you know, give up everything unless you were just ready to ascend or move on? I mean, we're all here well, collecting stuff because we like it. It 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 wasn't exactly like that because he didn't he didn't ascend in the way that you think he did. He came back, he was embodied. They went to France. He came back into the body. Everybody's like, oh, the body disappeared. He ascended to heaven. No, body disappeared because he was taken to another country where he continued his ministry with his wife and children. Well, he left some children behind, but there were children that came again. But he didn't do the ascension like you think he did the ascension. That isn't what happened, according to him. I'll bring him through and you guys can have this chitty chat with him. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't like he went into a town and he brought nothing with him. And he just knew that God was going to provide and did provide everything. Provided a place to sleep, provided food to eat, provided everything. Everything was provided. They had attachment to nothing. Not a zilch zero. That's, you know, that's talk about faith. That's like Faith times a thousand. But, but it's beyond faith. If you go in, in a way, right here in this message, right? It, there's one statement here where it says, never remembering your true divine source light energy with the power to create at will all that is ever needed to thrive on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So if you trust that you can create or it will manifest upon itself, then you don't need anything, right? This is what this is what Kathumi yeah. is saying. And this is yep. the life that he lived. He got to a yeah. point of total trust and knowing that I'm just a, a you know a, a spirit with a body and not a body with a spirit, it doesn't matter. The spirit can never be extinguished, right? Right. So I guess he hit that an even larger realization than we. It gets recapitulated, you know. Well, look what he did with the lot wine. Look what, he, look what he did with the loaves and the fishes. You know, the five and the right. two. Was it two he, fishes, he, five well, loaves, two two loaves and five fishes? I don't remember. Does it matter? He yeah, said, does I, it look, matter? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, but what I think is really cute that the chosen uses um, uh, olive bed gimel dolet. They just use be glad the, it wasn't a can of sardines. <laughs> Use the five said, I heard that. Email. <laughs> Email. So you, you, anyway, it's, we are manifesting. He's right here. He wants to come through. 
I'm going to bring them through. We are manifesting with every single thought that we have, both the positive and the negative in our lives. We need to become really vigilant about what it is that we're bringing forth. Clean up the clutter of our minds. Okay, here we go. Greetings, beloved ones. Welcome, welcome, Hashem. Thank you for mm -hmm. joining us. You are welcome. Understand that I am always with you. When, when, when we bring the energy of this consciousness through this body, and we allow this communication to sue, what is the occurring is that there's a frequency that is being emitted to every single one of you. Whether you are here, whether you are of this presentation, of this communication, of this conversation, understand that there is a frequency of love that is being granted, that is being shared. And with the consciousness that we embody, beloveds, we are igniting within you your conscious light of love and then what we ask of you is for you to share this with all beings that you encounter for what this allows you to do is to continue to spread the light as we are doing when we came forth there was so much war so much strife so much pain and what we have endeavored to do, beloveds, is to bring a relief, to bring love forth, to allow love to rule and to reign in everyone's hearts. Beloved, stay centered and connected to your hearts. Your minds you have filled with such mishigas, so many rules and regulations and so much judgment and so much fear. Allow yourselves to come true to your heart. I would ask that each of you now close your eyes. And if there are those of you who are listening, please make sure you do not do this while driving. But I ask you now to come into your hearts, beloved ones. And I ask you to bring the focus of your attention inwards. I ask you to be conscious and aware of the very breath that you are breathing. That when you breathe this breath, the life force that runs through you is the very light of creation, the very essence and the very fabric of love itself. And if you will but allow yourselves to remember what you are being asked to remember when we say the great remembrance, beloveds, is not anything from the Akash who you were, what you did, and with whom you did it, but rather we are asking you to remember that the very fabric and essence of your beingness is love and light. So allow yourselves to breathe in the breath of God, to know that you are an aspect of God, a sunbeam to the sun, and as you exhale, you breathe life into the next being. We are all trees, beloveds creating oxygen through photosynthesis. We are breathing life into another. The trees do not be, need to be told to grow. They provide shade, they provide oxygen. The plants do not need directions. It is not made in China and shipped to an Ikea warehouse. There is a, an intelligence, a native intelligence, that you are all made of, made from. Allow yourself, beloved, to remind others to say, do you remember that you are love and so am I? Do you remember that we come from light, that we are light, that the breath that we breathe is light? Do you remember this, beloved? You can ask with ferocity, you can ask with tenderness, but first and foremost, beloved, you must remember the truth of who you are. 
So this great remembrance is for you to align yourself with your heart, to forgive all, everything that you have held on to, release, all the places that you say no, say yes. Allow yourself to feel everything that is to be felt. And allow yourself to rest in the peace and the sure and certain knowledge that you are as I am. This has only ever been our message. There is nothing more to remember. There is nothing more to do. You are the very essence of God itself. I am is who we are. Take another inhale in, beloved ones. Allow the eyes to open and see if you can let yourself maintain the same presence of love when you gaze upon another. And more importantly, when you gaze upon yourself. Let the love that you experience be the love for yourself. If you could allow yourself to see you the way that we see you, you would see us, for we are you. You would see beauty and happiness and kindness and tenderness. You would see the very I am presence that you are. Beloveds, we would like to ask if anyone has any questions that they would like to bring forth. We thank you for the shift in consciousness frequency. That was Cass. Mm. You asked that the Yeshua was showing up, and he's here. What do you got for him? Maybe he stepped away. Anybody else? Linda? Um, Joshua? I'm still having a hard time um, unlocking my third eye. What recommendations do you have? Mm -hmm. Beloved, we would recommend that you delve into your heart to find the fear that is keeping this mechanism locked in place. The next time that you meet with Sahana Grace, we would ask that mm, she can specifically say these words to her, that she help you to unlock the mechanism that was installed. It is an implant, shall we say. That is the connection between what you would know to be your third eye and your heart. There is a mechanism that is keeping it locked and ask her to remove such device. Thank you. And I, indeed, I will assist. Indeed. Yeshua, Michelle asks, is there anything that she should know right now? Michelle. Mm -hmm. Michelle, there is a piece of forgiveness with your mother that has been difficult for you. And we would like to say that forgiveness is the key to unlocking this piece for you. I hope that's what you were looking for, Michelle. Now, Tess would like to know if you have anything for him. He's in the library right now, so I guess he's incognito. It is time for you, brother, to face the fears. It is time for you to once again bring yourself back from where you have been living in obscurity and where you have been in hiding. It is time for you to face down 
what have been your biggest fears? This is a conversation that we have continued to have with you, and we will continue to do so. But it is time for you to step out of the shadows and to bring forth all that you know. You have such a phenomenal embodiment of love, and it is time for you to bring all that you are to humanity. Hope that uh, applies, Tess, and you can utilize that. Yeah, sure. While you were delivering that message a few minutes ago, you talked about love, and you know the message I had today from Sanat Kumar discusses love, and the tenets of this experience is love. And an image came to mind when you were sharing, and it was as if I I walked up to someone who was in the middle of doing something that was not in love it was almost violent I, I, I kind of saw a violent scene and i just approached that person and i asked them where is the love and and i confronted them and just that question stopped them in their tracks is that word even when people are in such a rage can that word actually be used to turn it off can we yes. just say that word? I mean, is it that powerful? Yes. Yes. There is a frequency that to that word. In Hebrew, the word is ahava. And you must understand that the geometria and the numerical component of this only ever leads one to love. So yes, there is such power in this word. Mm -hmm. There are musicians, the Beatles. We are very fond of them. Love, love, love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. They were not wrong. Beloved, part of what you enacted today was the courage to say, I stand for love. I am love. I come from love. And love is what I grant you in this moment. And when you said it, it was said with love, not judgment. And that too ceased the behavior. I guess I'm going to use that more often in those situations if they arise. <laughs> we Get can that this love. whole thing, everyone. We can shift oh, this whole thing. Yes. Paint yeah. everything with love. Let love be the way that guides you in all things. Now, are you humans having a human experience? Indeed. And are there times when you will find yourself activated by someone? Yes. And are they showing an aspect of you that you have not yet applied love to? Indeed. So bring out your bucket of love and your love paintbrush and paint that, slather that, get that love all over that, dip it, <laughs> anoint it, let it be, drown in love, beloveds. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, sure. I have one more question. During your experience or time here 2000 years ago, it is said from many different stories and, and, and texts that you acted outside of love when you went to the temple and you flipped the tables over. Is that an accurate depiction of what happened that day? Absolutely. Okay. And so your humanness overpowered, you're acting within love at that point? Absolutely. Or was it more to it? Beloved, you must understand that the capacity to see is to see beyond the facade. So when you are faced with aliens and reptilians and beings who come with nefarious intentions and when you see them there are at times moments and this was one of the moments that we experienced in which you wish to upset the apple cart and there are times when there is soft love and there are times when there is tough love and that was a moment shall we say of tough love 
Beloved, you must understand that even in the even in the darkness, even in the ugliness, and even in the evil, there is still God, for God exists in all things. God exists in the darkness as well as in the light. You must understand that Lucifer is Samael, and Samael is an archangel, a being of light who was willing to indulge in the field of darkness to help this grand experiment as it is. The same way in which you said, where is the love? It was said with love. So a flipping of a table can be an act of love. Thank you. Thank you. Lydia Toma has a question. And she would like to know, based on our conversation a little while ago, was an aspect of you or were you Melchizedek in a previous incarnation? Yes. Yeah. Those of you that are being drawn to the ordinations that are forthcoming and those of you that will be drawn in the future and those of you who have been drawn in the past, there is an anointing that occurs that will aid and assist you in the pathway that you are upon. Once ordained in, in, in the order, is there any particular statement, sentence, words, or thought pattern that should be utilized to help expand the experience, or it'll just come as it comes? The Beatles have a song in which they say, love, love, love. Okay. That is it. Let it be the greatest anthem. Love is all there is. Love is all you need. All there is is love. With this ordination, beloveds, allow yourself to be steeped deeply within your heart to allow yourself to remember the truth of you. That is what you are being asked to remember. Yeah. Remember what we're here for and who we are. Mm -hmm. Now, Yeshua, did you have these conversations with your disciples at this level or? 2000 years ago, was there a different thought stream? You know, like, did we talk about divinity and, and, and you know, in, eternity in, in, in the way that we talk about it now? Or was it a, a different understanding 2000 years ago? There were many words that came to them that they did not understand. This is why much was spoken in parables. There is not the need for parables today, for there is a deeper understanding. Mm, beloved one, there are many messages that are coming through on this chat feature. Would you please address those to oh, see sorry. what else is there? Atonement at one at one minute. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. That's right. Are you also incarnated as Krishna? Tess wants to know. Were you Krishna? Indeed. Beloved, here is what we wish you to understand. The way in which these questions are asked, you are looking for special and specific relationships. There is no aspect of the Akash that I have not embodied. There is no aspect of beingness. I have done everything that you have done. I have been everywhere that you have been. There is... There is nothing that has not been experienced what is known to be these different aspects of beingness we have and are all we have been all things you are looking to separate you are looking to say this happened at this time and this happened here and this belongs here and beloved time is an illusion so ask me if i am you and i will say yes so have I been this or have I been that? The answer is always yes. Anybody else have anything? Uh, Water, I see your statements regarding at one minute and, um, you know, just invoking the word love into your entire day. And is there anything more you, you, you want to expand on with that, Water? You know, you know, there are more statements than questions, so I don't want to leave you out in any way. 
turn your mic on, Warner, if you have anything to say. Oh, one new message. They're jumping. I really don't talk in questions. Okay. Christianity was made up later. That's why I'm back in the Essene mindset. Yes. Water um, very much aligns herself with the Essenes. And I, I'm sure you're aware of that, Yeshua, since you've been here with us and she's joined our uh, weekly group. And um, she is one of the Essenes. All of you are. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, understand yeah. that you do not come into frequency with us if you are not in alignment with us. You do not find yourself here. As Sahana Grace likes to say, you do not trip and fall into this Zoom session if you do not share our frequency. So we know you, we are intimate with you, we speak with you. You do not always allow yourself to recall our conversations. You do not always allow yourself to remember, but you are here out of a vibrational match. For that is the only way that this can possibly go. Hmm. Beloveds, we will take our leave of you. Thank you. And indeed, we shall speak with you again. Thank you so much for visiting with us tonight. Really it is indeed our pleasure. I we love, love Greetings and salutations. Farewell. Oof, I am toast. Toasty, toast, toast. All right, did you guys get what you wanted and needed? I did. Yes. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, welcome. I believe I peppered Jesus with questions tonight. <laughs> like, but I, that's, I am. Shit all the, the time. Beauty of the, when these channels and 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 you're when welcome. I, when I'm in that position and I'm the one live, that you guys ask lots of questions because when we have that connection going on, that, that's the best time to get the straight answers. Um, I write down a lot of the questions in advance before I channel, and I leave them on a piece of paper, and then as I'm in my automatic writing session, the answers just come; they just flow. So anytime you have questions, I recommend you write them down. And you never know when the answers are going to come, whether it's in a live session like this or just in your own meditation, driving along the parkway all by yourself. Um, once you pose those questions and put that question mark at it after it, that's it. That's their permission to give you the answers. And uh, I, I get excited every week when we get to ask questions. I don't know. <laughs> and no matter who's channeling, I always ask questions. Believe me. <laughs> You're all welcome. I love you. I thank you for being here. I have I have such a precious relationship with Rob. We just do this well, and we have so much fun doing it. And back when we were doing Soma Life Sundays, and now we're doing you know, this fun podcast, uh, it's just my absolute pleasure. I love you. I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for your partnership. I thank all of you that come and are here live with us. I thank all of you that watch the recordings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is our absolute sole purpose to be of service to all of you with the message that we bring forth from spirit. And I thank you so much for being here. Thank you everyone for joining us. And just so you know, Lynn and I haven't spoken since last Wednesday when we had our podcast. Is that possible? <laughs> they just I think they just grow organically. There's many times where we don't speak at all, except for when we connect yeah. on the Zoom. And exactly. Like she said, exactly. we're only around the corner from each other. But It's uh, so funny. Like, cool. Rob, you have not talked for the longest time, and we pick up the phone, and we're like, hey, hey. Like, it's just been minutes, you know? It's just one of those yeah. Yeah. one of those ancient, ancient friendships. Yeah. I think uh, if you ever time our cemetery, though. Yeah. And tomorrow, we all know, tomorrow is 888. Right? Oh, the Lion's oh, I Gate you, referred no. to as August 8th. So I'm doing two uh, two events tomorrow, one at 10 a.m. and then one at 8 p.m. And we're doing a Lionsgate portal. And one of my staff, she's a genius at this, 
she has come up with the most, like we have sales, we have stuff on, on sale. We have fire sales. We have the craziest stuff going on. So if any of you want sessions, classes, training, mentorship, any of that, it's there. And, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be really beautiful. I don't know what I'm bringing forth, but it's going to be fierce. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine tomorrow's messages are going to be quite powerful. I asked yeah. for 8 this morning, but I think it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> that, that only makes sense, right? Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. I've been up since the crack of dawn with a cat that had eight, six teeth pulled yesterday, who is high oh, as fuck on, on kitty morphine. So he's just lying on the floor. It, it Like, here's his water dish, and he's literally putting his face in the water dish and going... So his whole scrub is soaking wet. He's just... He's high, he's drunk, he's on his back, he's purring, he's like, pet me, pet me, pet me. And, you know, he, poor little guy had his, had his little teeth out. But there was a dead mouse waiting for me this morning, so there was that. What are you going right. to do? Gifts from, gifts from the kitty. So Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. Really, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank but, you. Wait, Susan just wrote something, said, uh, is there a Monday and Wednesday 10 a.m. on this Zoom? I found it once. Um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there's a group of us that are going through, um, what's it called? A Course of Love, a three-year journey that we're about six months into. So we meet with them in the morning on the same platform. Not not the Book of Miracles. We're, we're doing A Course of Love. Years ago, we did A Course in Miracles, and then years ago, we did The Way of Mastery. So we've been together for four years, and yes, it's free. Uh, and we get together, and we're I think we're on chapter 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, one of those chapters. And we get together, and we meet, and we meet from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we get together, and we meditate, and then we do the readings, and we sing the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic together. And uh, yeah, so that's what we do. That's what we do. That resonates with you. That's the course of miracles. That's a yeah, well, it's yeah, it's, it's it, plus tax. <laughs> so we did the course of miracles one year. We met every single day, and then we did the way of mastery, and we met every single day for three years. And and I was like, all right, you guys, I love you, but like enough. So now now we meet three days a week, and we do the same lesson on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then um, we're going to, it's going to be three years through this for everything that we're going through with the course of love, a course of love, which is part two of a course of miracles. So that's what we do. All right, beautiful people. I'm out of here. Thank you. Get some rest, Lynn. We'll talk to you later. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining if us. Could, it's been fun. Please pray for my kitty cat, uh, Astro. Nadia. If if you're serious about coming, get registered because I'm about to close the link. Because is he going to come too? Are you going to bring him? Oh my God, is he going to get ordained too? Okay, here's the thing: if he's not getting ordained, he can't come to the ceremony. So if you're going to stay at a hotel, you might need to leave him there. But ask him. Maybe he's supposed to get ordained too. You never know. You never know. It's a very beautiful. It's experience. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> no, no, nothing's required of you. It's it's Nothing just a beautiful. It might be the best birthday present you could ever give him. There you go. I love that I'm able to read your lips. Like, girl, come on. Like we're like <laughs> we're. Like you no, know, you have no idea. Like she and I could talk seven hours a day and never be done. Okay. I had to pry myself away today. All right. I love you all. Blessings. Thank you. Thank Greetings, you salutations, peace, peace, love, and Hello, everything. Else. Everyone, Warner, everyone, Carol. All right. I love you. Rob, Bye, I'll see friend. you soon. Have Bye, my friend. darlings. <laughs>